House uh, Speaker battle, it is heating up uh, with Congressman Jim Jordan and Steve Scalise, uh, the front runners at this point. Possible vote to come next week. And a look at uh, this and other D.C. politics uh, political headlines right now. I want to bring in Heidi Heitkamp, former senator of North Dakota. She is the, now the director of the University of Chicago's Institute of Politics and a CNBC contributor. Also joining us this morning, former Texas Congressman Jeb Hensterling, who served as chairman of the House Financial Services Committee and chair of the House Republican Conference. Jim! I want to thank uh, both of you uh, for joining us. What, what happened? It, Obama used to call him Jim. Uh, so I, I, I called I, him Jeb, right? I didn't, no, you called him Jeb. I thought that I'm I missed... Refer, uh, he knows. He, that's why I started laughing. He knows that he, he saw his call him Jim. So I, right, Jeb? You, you remember, right? <laughs> Well, let's, let's uh, go apparently to... Apparently you remember. <laughs> I do, because uh, I don't like when that happens. Your name is right. Jeb, damn it. Uh, <laughs> usually I, I like to go ladies first, so I was going to start with Heidi, but I want to go to Jeb just because he, he comes from the Republican Party. He's just watched this whole thing uh, come apart. And, I, and I'm so curious, A, what your first just reaction to all of it has been, but B, who you think uh, should or should not uh, be the speaker. Well, at the moment, I'm not sure why any Republican uh, would want to be speaker. I mean, it's kind of like in the House Republican Conference, we're handing out bowls of hemlock asking who wants to be Socrates. But apparently right now, we have at least two who wish to be speaker. I'm not convinced, though, uh, that we won't necessarily see somebody else. So I'm, I'm not sure I care to get into among my friends who I think would be best. I would say between Steve Scalise um, and Jim Jordan, I would probably give the edge to Scalise, but bless his heart, that guy's been through a lot. And with right. his recent cancer diagnosis, you know, he, he says he's fit, bless him. He has to make that decision. But I think some members will question, this is a very tough job as we've just right. witnessed. And so he's gonna have to answer those uh, questions. Jim Jordan, uh, obviously the uh, co-founder of the Freedom Caucus, um, has managed to uh, rub people the wrong way. He's gotten high uh, marks recently for his work on the Judiciary Committee. But I got to tell you, if you look at history, it could be that the speakership is going to somebody who may not actually right. want it today. Because okay, the so, conference may want somebody right. who doesn't want it, and that Jeb, could be Patrick McHenry. Very quickly, before I go to Heidi, here's the most important thing, I think, for, this, for our audience in particular. Uh, how do you handicap the possibility of a government shutdown in November? Does it change if you have a Scalise or a Jordan? And politically, is it good or bad for uh, your party or, or insofar as there's an argument to be made that a government shutdown could actually, for, for an extended period of time, is ultimately bad for the economy, and bad for the economy would be good for the Republican Party in terms of getting the White House next year. I, it perverse as that description may very well be. Yeah. So, Andrew, I would say, number one, keep your eye on the ball of what's going to happen to the rule dealing with the motion to vacate. So right now you have a lot of members saying, I'm voting for no one for speaker unless we uh, modify this motion to vacate. So to answer your question, you kind of have to know what's going to happen there. If there is no modification of the motion to vacate, the one member uh, rule right now threshold, if you will, then I think it's going to be challenging to avoid at least a short-term shutdown. Now, as we know, there's all kinds of wailing and gnashing of teeth, and it can be very bad for individual families, but I think there's been two dozen of these since I've been walking on the face right. of the planet. Do I think that ultimately would inure to the benefit of Republicans or Democrats? I got to tell you, when the Democrats control the White House, they control the Senate, it's hard to win that messaging war two to one, and I don't think there would be lasting implications for the macro economy. I, I just think that's what history shows let, us. Let me go to Heidi with the same question. Well, let me tell you, everybody is looking at Matt Gates and they're blaming him, but there were seven other members, and I think there's probably some contrition going on right now, given kind of how mad everyone is. And so if you're going to be speaker, you should be talking to not Matt Gates, but talk to the other seven. Really say, we cannot have this kind of dysfunction. It looks bad. I think Scalise is much more of a deal maker. I think he's much more respected than Jordan. 
And so I put my money on Scalise. And yes, I think Jeb, my good friend, when we did some great work when I was on banking and he was on financial services, um, and we are proud of the work that we did together. But let me tell you, those days, I hope, come back when a member in the Senate and a member of the House can work together. Right. I think Scalise is the kind of guy who can pull that together. He's well liked by everyone. Heidi, to the question, though, about a, a potential government shutdown, and not just a government shutdown for a day or two, but something uh, longer, more sustain, uh, that, that sustains for a longer period of time, but most importantly, that rattles the markets, rattles uh, the bond markets, rattles rating agencies. I mean, I think that's the sort of bigger yeah. picture here. I, yeah, I should have closed the loop on, on my comment, and that is that as long as he can bring, whoever the speaker is, he or she, can bring along seven other members and explain, look, we cannot have dysfunction. I think we have a chance not to shut down government. But right now, if you're betting, you're betting that we're going to shut down government in November. And that's going to anger a lot of folks. We've got strikes happening right now. We've got interest rates. You just heard how, how the, the shape the housing market's in. The last thing we need to do is rattle this economy right. with a shutdown. Heidi, how does this uh, shake up, if it does at all, the presidential election? Uh, we've been talking about this, the idea with Bill, Bill Daly in the last hour. You know, if the economy I, turns I, d decidedly negative, and, and right now I know there's people who debate about where this economy really is right now. I, I, I don't know if there is much of a debate, or there should be the deba debate there is, but... If it does turn decidedly negative, that would ultimately be bad for uh, for President Biden. And the question well, is, if, yep. Yeah, and President Biden has been talking about the economy is functionally pretty good. Guess what? People don't believe that already. And if you end up with rising unemployment rates, if you end up with inflation, if the interest rates cripple um, people's ability, you know, we know that people in some ways are spending beyond their means. That's going to come home to roost. And so anytime there's a bad economy, it's bad for the sitting president. And so the tea leaves are not good moving in that direction.